Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael, a UCLA medical student, and on this corner of the internet, we explore tips and tricks to live more happy, fulfilling pre-med lives. Today, we're talking about everything that goes on a medical school application. Medical school admissions is a longitudinal, involved process. It's not like a light switch. You can't just flip a switch and turn it on. For example, you can't wake up on your MCAT test day and expect everything will go well. You can't get to the application and just write your way out, especially if you haven't had the appropriate experiences in the last four years. Even if you had a million tips and tricks, you wouldn't be able to get into medical school on a whim. Not only do you need to know what to do, you need to know how to execute it well. Overall, med school admissions is actually relatively simple. And I'll prove it to you in this video. There's not a lot of moving parts, but it's not easy. And there's an important difference between things being simple from things being easy. Do not confuse the two. In fact, some of the simplest things can be the hardest to do. For example, being honest, extremely simple. Just be honest all the time. But I'm sure you can think of many times where being honest just wasn't easy. Here's another example, gardening. In theory, relatively simple. Give your plant some sunlight, give your plant some water, and that's all it needs to survive. But do you know how much to water it, how much fertilizer you need to put in, how much sun it should get, what types of sun there are? There's a lot of things that go into this relatively simple thing. And for those of you that have experience with plants, you'll know it's not very easy. Again, simple is different from easy. Medical school admissions is simple, and I'll walk you through the entire thing, but it's not easy. One thing before we start, I'm not in the business of giving you one-off tips so that you can skate through a quiz or luckily land one shadowing position. If that's what you're looking for, I'm not your guy. There are plenty of people doing that here on YouTube and I'm happy to point you in the direction of them. I just don't think it's sustainable. And so the reason I make these videos is to help you develop the skills, the habits necessary to execute on all this information that's already available on the internet. The goal for me is threefold. One, have you understand medical school admissions like the back of your hand? Two, be able to execute on all that you need to do. And three, be able to teach the next generation that will inevitably have questions for you. Before we get into it, I wanna prime your mind. Pause the video now and take some time to comment below what are all the parts that make a medical school application. That way, when I do go through the entire application, you're able to figure out what you knew from what you didn't. And we together can fill in those knowledge gaps. What are the factors that go into deciding whether you get into medical school or not? More importantly, what are the skills that you need to master to ensure that you're excelling in all of these domains? I'll show you everything that goes into a primary medical school application and I'll break down each one. Of course, first and foremost is your GPA. It's important for medical schools to know that you have the academic ability to handle the rigors of medical school. If you can't handle your undergraduate coursework, chances are you'll probably struggle through the fast-paced medical school curriculum as well. Now, let's talk about what goes into a perfect GPA. Number one, time management. Are you finding time to study ahead of the exam or are you cramming everything the night before? Pillar number two, effective study strategies. Of course, that topic deserves a video of its own and you can see my video on that subject here. Pillar number three, consistency. Are you studying constantly or are you trying to upload an entire semester's worth of information in a week? Hoping, just hoping that it doesn't leak out during the test. Second, of course, is your MCAT score. And we have a similar rationale here to your GPA. The reason we need another academic metric in addition to your GPA is that your GPA often isn't standardized. You can imagine that a 3.8 GPA at say Harvard feels different than a 3.8 GPA at say UCLA. And with the hundreds of universities across the nation, it's hard to really understand what a 3.8 GPA student looks like. Different professors who have different grading principles all can affect your GPA. And there's just too many variables across the nation to really know what that means. The NCAT then is a standardized way to measure anyone. No matter what school they come from, the NCAT is one test standardized across the entire nation. Let's break down what it takes to get a great NCAT score. The MCAT is definitely a different beast than the exams you took in undergrad, but the fundamentals remain the same. Pillar number one, time management. Again, are you finding time to study ahead of time or are you just cramming everything? Pillar number two, effective study strategies. 
Again, see my video here on the best ways to study as a pre-med student. Of course, the third pillar also applies here, consistency. Are you studying constantly and revising your knowledge? Or are you desperately trying to hold on to whatever information you can just so you can forget it right after the exam? The fourth thing that is particularly important for the MCAT is an optimized study schedule. Are you doing the right amount of practice tests, the right amount of practice questions, and are you applying what you're learning as opposed to reviewing concepts again and again passively? Too often, students use the textbooks from Kaplan or the Princeton Review as their holy Bible, when really they should just be used as reference books. The majority of learning happens when you apply your knowledge to unique questions and unique exams, and you pull what you learn from there to the next test. In short, I've never heard of a student do extremely well in the MCAT by prioritizing concept review over practice problems. The third thing that goes on to your application are all of your extracurricular experiences. How are you spending your time outside of school? The AMC sets domains for extracurricular activities, and here are all those possible categories. Artistic endeavors, community service volunteer medical slash clinical, community service volunteer not medical or clinical, conferences attended, extracurricular activities, hobbies, honors awards and recognitions, intercollegiate athletics, leadership that isn't listed elsewhere, military service, other, paid employment, medical or clinical, paid employment, not medical or clinical, physician shadowing or clinical observation, presentations, posters, publications, research or lab, teaching, tutoring, or teaching assistant. You certainly don't have to have every type of activity. In fact, it's not physically possible. But however you're choosing to spend your time, are you making an impact with the time that you're spending? Are you a standout in how you're spending your time? Or are you going down this entirely long list, spending a month here and a month there, just trying to check off every box that you can. I want to be clear here. Many applicants think that one activity is better than another. Artistic endeavors is less than paid employment, medical or clinical. Military service is less than leadership. Something like that. But that's simply not true. You can be a part of the UCLA Student Stroke Team, a highly competitive organization at UCLA, where undergraduate students help neurologist attendings conduct clinical trials. But if you faded into the background and did the absolute minimum, that'll be less impactful than if you joined Vietnamese Community Health, an organization anyone can join if you spent four years actively applying to grants to host health fairs in underserved communities. You can spend your extracurricular time however you want. Just make sure you're making an impact. You're making a difference. That way, you're going to stand out when it comes time to apply. And the easiest way to make a difference well, that's to do things that you care about. You'll not only work harder for the activity or the organization that you're working for, but you'll enjoy what you're doing. You won't feel like it's work. And that's a win-win on all fronts. Another part of your application are your letters of recommendation. Of course, every other YouTuber or blog that you read will tell you that you need two science letters of recommendation and one non-science letter of recommendation at the minimum. If it's a good video or article, they'll also tell you that these should be strong letters of recommendation. And how do you get a strong letter of recommendation? Well, let's break that down now. So a strong letter of recommendation comes off the back of a strong relationship. It's usually a professor or someone who's familiar with your extracurricular work. That work that you've done with or for that person, was it high quality? Was it involved? Or were you doing just the absolute minimum? Of course, this relationship is not something you can develop over the three months before you apply. That's why I mentioned in the beginning that medical school admissions is something that you have to plan for. You can't just flip a switch and turn it on and write your application and hope that you get in. Strong letters of recommendation take strong relationships and hell, some of these strong relationships takes years to build, especially given that these professors and mentors are genuinely busy people. A strong letter of recommendation shows clearly that you have built a strong relationship with this advisor and that this advisor is willing to support you that they're willing to put their name on this piece of paper and share personal stories, all with a goal of supporting your application and your eventual professional development. Another part of your medical school application is your personal statement. This is an essay about one to one and a half pages single spaced that explain why you want to go into medicine. Let's break down what makes a strong personal statement. Of course, this is an involved topic requiring a video of its own, but here are some questions that help guide you. One. Did you highlight your greatest qualities? 
Is the you on paper similar to who you are in person? Are these stories that you're telling in your personal statement something you'd be comfortable reiterating in person during an interview? Did you show or demonstrate your qualities rather than just tell us about them? In other words, can anyone else write the same thing that you did? If it's just a series of statements like, I'm a team player, I would work well in a healthcare team, then yes, anyone can write them. If you're tying these qualities, however, to your specific personal stories and your specific personal feelings, then that's harder to replicate. For example, I missed making swing passes to my friend Jeremy in the corner and throwing up three fingers to signal the inevitable three that was to swish through the nylon net. Those are two sentences from my own personal statement. What do those two sentences say about me? And equally as important, can anyone else write these sentences? Number three, did you tie the formative experiences that you're discussing back to medicine? In other words, is it relevant to the question, why do you want to be a doctor? And fourth, did you reemphasize or conclude with your qualities, perspectives, and passions? In other words, did I leave this essay knowing a little bit more about who you are? And would I feel comfortable going back into a room with my other admissions team members and support your application? Or would I throw your application in with the rest of the other 100 applicants who all were unremarkable to me? After you finish your primary essay, you'll start working on your secondary essays. And let's again break down what makes for effective secondary essays. Number one, did you have a system put in place to get your secondaries back to medical schools quickly without sacrificing quality? I'll give you a hint. This document is more than 100 pages long, and willpower wasn't enough for me to get all of this done on time. For those of you unfamiliar with secondaries, a general rule of thumb is to get it back within two weeks. If you're really good, you'll get it back within three days or even immediately if you pre-wrote the secondaries before it entered your inbox. If you're more like me and the secondaries hit you like a flood, then it'll take more like a month. One thing that can help with this is to have a bank of your lived experiences and the associated qualities just so that when you get the secondary prompts, you know exactly what you're gonna talk about and how. If you're lucky enough to be invited for an interview, then that's going to be the final part of your application. Again, we'll break down what goes into an interview. Interviews deserve an entire video on its own, but I'll give you three guiding questions here today. One, were you a good conversationalist? Was it easy for me to talk to you? Two, how did you handle the pressure? Medical school interviews are extremely high pressure situations. And did you handle that well? Three, and this is the most important question for the admissions committee member to answer. Can I see you as a future student here? Can I see you as an eventual colleague farther down the line? If so, I'd be happy to support your application amidst all the other thousand applicants who did apply. As you can see, medical school admissions is relatively simple. There's not a lot of moving parts. It's not like opening the hood of your car and looking underneath to see 101 small parts each of which you don't understand the function of. The medical school application process is not like that. Every part makes sense and every part is an opportunity for you to show the admissions team who you are and why you deserve to be a student at their school. Not only will you be academically sound, you'll also have proved that you spend your time in equally impressive ways. You'll have met some of the faculty at that school, showed off your conversational skills and reassured them that you're a nice, fun person to talk to. That entire package allows them to truly believe that they'll be proud of having trained you as the next generation of physicians. Again, while everything here is simple, it's not rocket science, executing it is hard. It's hard to be a great conversationalist, it's hard to earn a high GPA, and it's hard to do well in the MCAT. That's where the development of important skills kicks in. That's when you have to know how to effectively manage your time, know how to effectively study, know how to effectively build strong relationships, and know how to put yourself on paper. Each of those topics get their own video. And of course, if you'd like to watch, the best way to do it is to subscribe, leave a like down on this video if you liked it, and hit that bell notification to make sure that you are notified when those videos do come out. If you have any other questions, you can find me on Instagram here. Please do send a message. And if you're a local UCLA student, please do consider checking out our partners for this video, the UCLA Pre Med community. They're a great organization for anyone, regardless of where you are in your medical school journey, to get some resources and to get some help. All right, that's all for today, and I will see you next time. Oh, shoot, you're still here? Well, thanks for watching to the end of the video, and 
Second, I, I was just working on this quiz. It's this medical school chances calculator. Uh, you just take a 10 question quiz and at the end of it, you get your strengths, your weaknesses and a customized school list. If you wanna take it, here's the QR code. I mean, if that didn't work, um, here's a QR code as well. And then I'll also put the link in the description box below. Well, I'm gonna go back to finishing the quiz and I'll see you later.